Hello everyone. So in this video I'd like to talk about energy. Now I think we all use the term energy as sort of a colloquial term. We might say something like that kid running around the store screaming sure does have a lot of energy right now or I've got no energy today so I can't finish up my chemistry homework. But right now I'd like to strictly discuss energy through a scientific standpoint. So let's first start by defining energy. So what is energy? Well, energy is defined as the capacity to do work. So then that begs the question, well, what is work? Well, work is defined as the action of a force through a distance. So anytime an object is being forced over any distance, there is work being done on that object. And any other object that has the capacity to force an object over any distance, uh, that object is considered to have energy. Now, the total energy of an object at any given time is the sum of that object's kinetic energy and its potential energy. Kinetic energy is associated with an object's motion. So an object that is in motion has kinetic energy, while an object that is at rest does not. Potential energy, on the other hand, is associated with an object's position or its composition. So in this example here on the right side of your screen, we have an apple that is being held several feet above the ground, even though this apple is at rest, it still has energy. It has potential energy, simply because of its position within Earth's gravitational field. Now, when the barrier that is holding up that apple is released and the apple is allowed to fall down, that potential energy that the apple initially had gets converted into kinetic energy as the apple accelerates downward. Once the apple actually hits the ground, the energy, the kinetic energy gets transferred to the ground and it gets converted to a third type of energy called thermal energy. And thermal energy uh, is the energy that is, uh, that is associated with an object's temperature. So thermal energy is actually a type of kinetic energy because it comes from motion. It comes from the motion of the individual uh, atoms and molecules that uh, compose the apple, or in this case, also the ground. So let's recap. The apple initially has potential energy uh, as it falls down, it gets converted into kinetic energy. When it hits the ground, it gets converted into thermal energy, and it also gets transferred to the ground, which raises the temperature of the ground by just a little bit. Now, at this point in the video, I'd like to discuss uh, a couple of very important principles in terms of energy, and one of them has to do with conservation of energy. So the law of conservation of energy states that energy can neither be created nor destroyed in any physical or chemical process. So if you've been listening to some of the terminology that I've been using, I've been saying that uh, potential energy is converted into kinetic energy, is converted into thermal energy. I don't really talk about energy being gained or lost because it's not, it's conserved. Although energy can be, uh, can be converted from one form to another, the total energy still remains constant. So in other words, the amount of thermal energy that is gained by the ground is exactly equal to the initial amount of potential energy uh, that the apple had while it was being held up there. So that's conservation of energy in a nutshell. And the second point uh, that I'd like to bring up has to do with the direction of potential energy. And uh, systems that uh, systems tend to, when possible, systems tend to change in a way that minimizes their potential energy. So the apple fell down because it was going from a state of high potential energy to a state of lower potential energy. And systems that have high potential energy are considered to be unstable, and systems that have low potential energy are considered to be stable. So the apple was unstable when it was being held up because it had a lot of localized potential energy, and it fell down to in order to reach a much more stable state with a lower potential energy. Now, there are some uh, molecules out there, there's actually many molecules out there, uh, that are just like that raised apple that we just described. They have a lot of potential energy. Although this potential energy is not associated with their position in a gravitational field, but it's actually associated with the composition of the molecules. So the molecules that compose gasoline, for instance, uh, because of the arrangement of their charged particles uh, within the molecules, they have a lot of potential energy. And a lot of the, some of this potential energy can actually be harnessed to do work and, for instance, move a car forward. So just like in the example uh, with the apple, when it was being held up, it didn't fall down because it had a barrier holding it up. When you release that barrier, you're giving it an avenue by which to lower its potential energy. Um, a combustion reaction is actually an avenue by which to lower the potential uh, energy of, uh, of, um, of the molecules that compose gasoline. So when the molecules uh, that compose gasoline 
undergo combustion, uh, they turn into the molecules that compose exhaust. And if you're uh, paying attention to this video properly, you can probably uh, infer that the molecules that compose exhaust have a much lower potential energy than the molecules that compose the gasoline. So there's two main different types of potential energy. There's the gravitational potential energy that was uh, that, that, that I talked about with the apple, and then there's the uh, chemical potential energy that's actually associated with the composition of molecules. So I hope this video helped you out a little bit, and have a good one.